This is lecture three of unit four, the last lecture of unit four. And in this lecture, we are going to talk about only one big topic, that is immunology. Generally, they ask one to two questions from immunology, which is written here. In immunology, we will talk about adaptive immune system as well as innate immunity, and we'll also talk about the primary and secondary immune response. We'll see how exactly the innate immunity interacts with the adaptive immunity to build the immune response. We'll talk about antigens. We'll talk about antibodies and how antibodies are produced. We'll talk about all the different types of antibody, their structure and functions in details. And we'll also talk about different immune system disorders. We'll talk about the hypersensitivity. We'll also talk about the complement system. We will solve most of this immunology chapter with animations so that we can conclude immunology in less amount of time by investing less time. So the cells of immune system uh, will be composed of all the cells of immune system, which is a part of either innate or adaptive immune defense, but they are made up with the cells, or cells uh, of our immune system. But uh, again, humoral immune system or humoral immunity is a part, which can also uh, be a part of the innate as well as adaptive, but they are made up with proteins, mostly. They, are, they don't have any cells. So the cells of immune system, if you want to think about, there are many different names. You know, we have B cell, T cell, we have neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, we have macrophage, mast cells, dendritic cells. So these are uh, the major cells and components of our immune system. Now, few of these cells are uh, a part of innate defense. Few of these cells are a part of adaptive defense. For example, B cell, T cell. B cell is totally a part of the adaptive defense. Uh, T cells uh, is a part of junction and crosstalking between innate and adaptive immune system. So, if you look at this, uh, in this case, we are looking at all the blood cells that are available, okay? Because if you look at our blood, the blood is composed of many different types of cells. In fact, three major types of cells based on our class 9 and 10 standard understanding. It has red blood cells, it has white blood cells, and it also has platelets. They have three separate features. So, red blood cells... Uh, and platelets, we know their function. Red blood cells carry oxygen, it contains hemoglobin, and platelets help to clot blood. Apart from that, all white blood cells, they function in immune system. So what do we mean by this? So all these cells, all our body cells, you know, blood cells, they, they have origin, and only one origin. That is the bone marrow of our body. So bone marrow is like uh, the what I can say, the, the, the place where all these blood cells will, will be originated. So they are known as hematopoietic stem cells. The cells which are present in bone marrow are known as hematopoietic stem cells. Hematopoietic, poietic means in this case, a poiesis means generation or production. So hematopoiesis means the production of uh, all the blood cells. And so this is the progenitor cells, which, which can lead to uh, production of all the blood cells, actually, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, everything. So this is a kind of a uh, totipotent kind of cell. So, you know, multipotent, not exactly totipotent, but we can say multipotent uh, cell. So multipotent means a, a stem cell that can produce many different variety of cells on its own. So this hematopoietic stem cells uh, of bone marrow, uh, can differentiate between three different types of cell. One is a lymphoid progenitor cell, myeloid progenitor cell, and erythroid progenitor cell. Three different types of progenitor cells which are pluripotent in nature. That means they are going to produce even more different varieties of blood cells. So common lymphoid progenitor cells, as you see lymphoid progenitor, they are going to produce lymphatic tissue cells like B cells and T cells and natural killer cells. These three types of cells of our immune system because, you know, if you think about where do we find this, this lymphoid, myeloid and erythroid, they are actually part of the bone marrow cells, okay. So you will never find these cells to be present in your bloodstream, okay. These are the progenitor cells, so part of our bone marrow which actually give rise to all the cells like plasma, uh, T cells and NK cells, things like that. So actually in our bloodstream we will find out the end product of the cells. So lymphoid progenitor cells will produce B cell, T cell and natural killer cell. While myeloid progenitor of the cells will produce neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil. 
and uh, erythroid progenitor cells can produce megakaryocyte and erythroblasts, things like that. Okay. So these are the differences. See, erythroid progenitor produces erythroblasts and megakaryocyte. Megakaryocyte give a rise to platelets. And erythroblast is a progenitor cell that will produce erythrocyte, which is known as red blood cell. So this part we don't need to understand much. Erythroid progenitor is not none of our business for understanding immune system. So our understanding depends on this common lymphoid progenitor and myeloid progenitor cell. From lymphoid progenitor, we have B cell, T cell, and, and natural killer cell. Among these three types, natural killer cell is a part of innate defense. Plasma cell, which is a uh, modified version of B cell, is a part of adaptive. Uh, response and T cell is a part of both innate as well as adaptive. While myeloid progenitor cell give rise to neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, and they have different functions to play. While erythroid progenitor, uh, I mean, some of the other uh, myeloid progenitor cells can also produce unknown precursor cells. From there, it produces mast cells, uh, produces dendritic cells, as well as they also help in producing monocytes. From monocytes, they produce macrophages. So, macrophage is a part of the innate. Uh, immune system. Okay, so all of these are uh, examples of progenitor cells in our body. So now we are going to see uh, the functions of all these different types of cells in our body. Actually, when we talk about the function, we want to talk about the the end version of the cells, which are actually participating directly in the immune system. So, for example, myeloid lineage origin of cells, like neutrophil, is it is the principal phagocytic cell of our innate immunity. So, as I said, in the innate system, we have this, this macrophage, we have neutrophils, these are phagocytic cells because they do phagocytosis. And we know what phagocytosis is, it means uh, a phagocytic cell is going to engulf uh, the bacteria, the solid uh, pathogen, and it will chew it off. And it can break it down, throw it outside, or sometimes after breaking it down, it can uh, take a fragment of it and it can showcase it outside to the rest of the immune system cells. Then we have eosinophil. Eosinophil principal defender against parasites. That is what eosinophil is. It's a defender against parasites. So generally, you know, when uh, we are infected with worms, in that case, uh, these eosinophil cells are going to uh, protect us against those worm infections because worms are much longer, larger than an immune system cell. So this eosinophil in this case is going to uh, induce a mechanism known as antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity. With the help of it, it can create force in the, in the worm and can kill the worm. And we have basophil. Functions very similar to eosinophil as well as uh, along with mast cells. And basophil sometimes are converted to what is known as mast cells. And these mast cells are filled with uh, are rich in uh, different chemical mediators like histamine, prostaglandin, leukotriene. So this, this components, these chemical factors are known as, you know, uh, kind of anaphylatoxin. Because, you know, these this chemical components are going to trigger a set of response in our body. Generally, it causes allergic reactions in our body. So it generally causes uh, this airway constriction, vasodilatation. So these anaphylactic reactions are caused by the release of those components from mast cells. So these mast cells are very much responsible for our allergy reactions with pollen or animal dander, things like that. So we call it type 1 hypersensitivity as well. And uh, this, this uh, whole of this uh, cell, they are referred uh, to as polymorphonuclear leukocytes or PMN, these three types of cells, known as this polymorphonuclear leukocytes because uh, then their, their nucleus is fragmented and kind of connected like corridor system. So this multi-lobe nucleus, kind of two to five different lobes are fine, uh, lobes are present. You can see in this picture, uh, this polymorphonuclear nature. Uh, you can see, although it's not uh, clearly visible here, but you can see this this nucleus is not exactly circular. It's kind of lobed in this picture. You can clearly see these two separate lobes visible there. So these are all uh, important cells that are important. And, and another example, another example like dendritic cells. Dendritic cells are activator of T cells and they also initiate the adaptive immune response. So uh, all these cells have its specific roles to play. Now the question is, you know, in immune system, we have so many different cells that are involving in interaction all the time. So the problem is how exactly the immune system knows whether when to contact which cell, then how exactly one cell will contact with the other. That means, you know, uh, if we are talking about different line of defense, we need to make sure that uh, a particular line of defense cells are marked 
uh, with something, some, some designation uh, from the other. So that is really important to mark them in designation so that uh, they function properly. So in this case, we can do that uh, too. And actually immune systems are also marked by that same way. And this marking is done uh, by clusters of designation or CD. Clusters of designations are markers present on the surface of white blood cells or leukocytes. Uh, where you have a specific uh, structure, chemical structure on the surface, that is going to show you uh, a specific type of cell that is going to provide you the information that this cell is a B cell, this cell is a T cell, this cell is a uh, natural killer cell. So there is a specific marker for all the different function of the cell. For example, all the granulocyte cells, they have CD45 and CD15 uh, markers on the surface. For example, monocytes have CD45 and CD14 on their surface. T lymphocytes should have CD45 and CD3 on the surface. While T helper lymphocytes have CD4 plus on the surface, but cytotoxic T cells have CD8 uh, on the surface. So